So good day, everyone. And today I've got Ian with me, and we are going to do the electional or auspicious dates for the month of August. And we are taping on the day of the Lionsgate new moon on the 8th of August. And um, this is the sneak peek version in which you'll be seeing. And for the full version, you can check out um, on my Patreon, in which I'll put it in the description box below. But for the sneak peek, it'll be available on my YouTube channel and also Ian's YouTube channel as well. So, good day, Ian. Oh, yeah, good day. <laughs> Happy new moon Thank here. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's a good, good Leo new moon. Um, I guess not the most comfortable one with the, I, I think it, there was a T-square happening there as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, generally still a new new phase starting, new activities starting. So I'm, I'm glad to jump in here with you and, and start to decipher some of the more auspicious dates we have for, for the rest of August 2021. Right. So uh, I don't know, well, shall I just jump in? Or... Sure. Okay. Sure. So... Just, share, just share your screen and... Um... Maybe. Yeah, maybe just tell the audience as well, like what are the like few key things that um, or qualities you're looking for when you're electing or choosing an auspicious, uh, or an auspicious date? Yeah. yeah, guys, because right now what, what we're wanting to offer you guys is just not, you know, kind of spoon feed you the dates. We want to, you know, kind of give you what we use and, and kind of like some teachings so you can do this yourself as well at times and not be reliant on other others so much. So my, let's say, start of this electional approach is always the moon. So the, the moon is, for me, the, the most important thing when we're um, basically choosing for, for anything. Uh, and why is the moon so important? So a lot of you guys already know who, who watch astrology videos that the moon is our uh or or our emotions or emotional life or feeling life but it's also like our emotional center and whenever the moon is either in a good position or in a bad position that emotional center is either more stable or you know more agitated let's put it that way and when we're, you know, let's say doing our best to make our business grow or, you know, choose dates for video posting, writings, basically doing any kind of, you know, open public um, work, the moon usually um, needs to be, or I would love it if you could, you know, put it in a good um, position. And this is... The reason behind this, because the feelings and emotions influence us so much in our daily lives. And, and when these are grounded, the, the public or the other people um, interacting with your content, for example, or, or whatever your, it is that you're putting out the product, they are interacting with it from a more grounded place, from a more emotional, let's say, grounded, and I would even call it a mature place. So they're more receptive to the product. They're kind of... Um, not emotionally only reacting to the product or, or whatever it is that you're putting out, but they're, they're, you know, that it's easier even for the mind usually to work. Obviously, it depends a little bit on the mercury, but if the emotions are more grounded, it's easier for the mind to kind of um, approach the situations um, from a more stable place. And this is one of the reasons why we really need to put the moon in a good, good position. And one of the examples I have for this month is the, the 16th of August. <clears throat> now, it's a, it's, it's a pretty good, you know, electional date in, in a lot of ways. But let's start with the moon. And moon is in, in, in the sign of Sagittarius. So whenever the moon is in the sign of Sagittarius, and I invite you all to kind of observe this and observe your own emotional state and observe the emotional state, state of others and even online to see how are people reacting what are the what are the comments that are coming your way you know what are even your friends family how are they you know emotionally because during sag moon everybody's usually very optimistic very upbeat now whenever there's some sort of you know difficult aspect to the moon it can change and fluctuate a little bit but even when there's a difficult aspect to the moon and it's it's in in sag 
it's still the optimism, the kind of jovial nature of Sagittarius usually wins out uh, in my experience. So we're, we're already, you know, kind of one piece of the puzzle is, is right here um, uh, in, in Sag Moon. So what are the things I want to really say about the moon is um, moon void, of course, is, is really important. So if you don't know, moon void, of course, moon void, of course, is, is when there's no applying or when the moon is not applying any aspect to any other planet. So it happens every couple of days. And it really, um, if you don't have um, professional software, there's a bunch of free uh, softwares out there online that can help you uh, decide if it's if if you can't, you know, do it on your own chart. There's a bunch of st software out there that can help you do that and decide if it's moon void, of course. Now, the problem with moon void, of course, is. And this is, you know, the ancients, the Greeks, you know, didn't like it at all. And I, I kind of went on. Um, let's say a mission to either prove them wrong or prove them right. So what I did was I, I tried a bunch of things during Moon Void, of course, and, you know, they weren't that amazing <laughs> and the things weren't, weren't really good. And so I, I kind of pretty quickly decided and, and saw like the real data coming in from my own testing that you should, if you're starting something new, if you're doing anything, doing basically Moon Void, of course, um, probably shouldn't, you know, um, probably shouldn't and, and should keep keep away from it. So keep that in mind. I don't know, Donny, do you have... Of course, Moon is not um, ideal if you want to meet new people, for example, that you might want a new long-term relationship. Uh, when I see a void of course, Moon, uh, if you are stepping into like going for like presentation of new ideas or even going for a job interview, not the best. Because, you know, you're starting something and when the moon is not making aspects before it changes sign, it's like all your efforts might just be flushed down the drain. I, yeah, I think that's a really good way of putting it. It seems like you, you can do all the efforts and put in all the efforts, but it's like mm, nothing, nothing. Yeah, it just somehow out. results in nada, nothing. Making important large purchases, depending on the chart, if there's a void of course moon, I wouldn't advise anyone because it may not turn out to be what you expected. And you may later like need, need to go for a refund or there may not be a refund in some cases. Um, or the items that you thought that you needed and purchase it over a void of course moon and you later find out that, oh, I actually do not need this. <laughs> so I just spend money for nothing. And uh, of course, last but not least, if you are planning to start a business, starting a new or job, um, business project, I would say, starting well. new projects, and you've avoid of course moon, uh, it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit wonky here and there. So uh, <laughs> you may not get the desired outcome that you wanna. But having said that. Um, the void of course moon in an electional chart can be great if you are uh, maybe refining something, reviewing mm -hmm. something or editing something. Uh, you're taking stock of things. Yeah. Um, finding lost objects as well. I find void of course moon can actually bring some things to the surface and uh, or you're, some, you're probably doing like making some kind of to-do list is very good for when you're doing it under a void of course moon, because you're like wrapping up some things to kind of prepare when the moon changed to a different sign. Um, if you talk about social events and relationships, uh, not the time to meet new people, but then if you have like uh, family, friends, or, you know, just people that has an established relationship with you, go ahead with it. There's nothing wrong. Plan some activities, even though the moon is like void of course. Um, it's also good for rest and relax timing as well. You probably get some kind of peace of mind. Uh, if you're doing something like, you know, going to the, uh, going for a facial, going for a massage, something that relaxes you. It's got that 12th house energy. When I think about a void moon, um, so that's great for that. And, um, if you have a project that's already going on and you want to finish up the project, 
that you already begun before the void moon occurred. So during the void moon, when it when it's going on, you're wrapping up or finishing up the project as you go along. And last but not least, if um, void of course moon is like a closing chapter. So if you've got something excess that you want to get rid of, it's also good for that. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's what what I've experienced. It's almost like. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit exaggerating, but almost everything <laughs> that you can do in private, you know, in, in your private kind of area, you know, like Donnie said, finish something up, kind of nibble on something, maybe, you know, relax, take, you know, take it slow for, for a moment or two. These are really good during Moon Void, of course, you know, kind of, because it's, it's, for me, it's also like, um, there is a certain kind of, um, how do I put this now? It's, it's almost like the intuition or the kind of internal guidance is, I would say, a little bit wonky, maybe. It's, it's not like super amazing in those times. And, it, you know, the, the things that the intuitions and the, the things that come can be either a little bit distorted. And what I've seen is uh, happening during Moon and Water, of course. So this is one of the reasons I... I wouldn't you know want you guys to do anything big important projects whatever everything we have just said um during this as well and and also because like when people come for like choosing a good date because they usually is wanting to start something rather than end something or finish finishing up something mm. but uh on the other hand i've gotten electional requests for me to like when should i pass up my assisting project mm. So such questions like that, or like I've been working on this, like launching of this business for quite some time and I want to, just want to wrap this up. Mm -hmm. So depending how the question is phrased, a void of cause of void moon may not be as bad of a choice. Yeah, but mm -hmm. also I look at the last aspect that the moon has made before it went void to just kind of give me like a, like a, like a flavor. Mm-hmm. Most importantly, oh, okay. mm -hmm. when we do like electional astrology, the chart must somehow symbolically match the event or the energy that a person is going through for the purpose that the chart is applying for. Then it just, everything just kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you see for the 16th? <laughs> for this for the one? 16th. I, like um, the 16th, we already touched the Sag moon. And now we, we, we also want, you guys, we also want, you know, as many um, influences, planets, luminaries in as good positions as possible. So right now in, from the 16th, Venus is entering Libra. You know, we, we, I think most Venusian people have we've been waiting for this for, for quite some time. You know, Venus hasn't been um, doing so amazing lately. But, um, you know, Venus is very strong in, in, in Libra, in domicile uh, position. And we also still have Sun in the sign of Leo. So we already have quite important influences that we want in a strong position. We have them, you know, um, we have them basically. So and, there's three uh, planets in their own signs. Exactly. Um, sorry, I think... Mercury, Venus, and the Sun. Mercury, Mercury, yes. So we haven't even touched Mercury because Mercury already, you know, what's eighth? I think we, we're already Mercury is in Virgo. So, but from the 16th, you know, these three are in their own sign and the moon also in a good um, positive position. So, hopefully, you can see how we're doing this. We're putting as many. Um, good pieces of the puzzle together to kind of get one good result and now the next one usually when when, when we have already some you and obviously i want to emphasize this you can't get anything super perfect all the time there's always going to be some aspect there's some always going to be some retrograde there's always going to be something you know and I just want to emphasize that to you know to not go too crazy with it <laughs> and 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 you know um uh, stay sane with it. and now when we have these placements you know in in good positions now we want aspects as well so we want always obviously we want applying aspects mostly we want you know trying sextiles conjunctions you know as well and 
if, if possible, the squares. And, and it always depends on what you're exactly looking for, uh, the time for. But, you know, best, best if, if, if some squares and, and oppositions can be avoided. Now, yeah. we're in an interesting position in, in the 16th um, or during the 16th, because still, still the moon is already, you know, kind of separating from Venus. But it's still applying a, a sextile to Jupiter and Saturn, so that's this already good. When when Moon Moon is good again, the people's emotions, feelings are good. They are more receptive to to everything. Now I, there is a bit bit agitated there here with the six square. Sorry, go go ahead. I also like that because I use dispositors as in like the the final ruler of a sequence of planets, like what planet reports to who in the hierarchy of things via rulerships. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if I were to look at that moon, moon is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is ruled by Saturn. And uh, Venus in the first house is applying to trine that Saturn. So do you reckon it's like a good chart to kind of fortify or strengthen a relationship since you choose a liberal rising as well? Um, this, is, this is what maybe I wanted to say again, because if we're like... Um... If we're choosing a specific moment, then yes, for sure. If, if we're choosing um, uh, a very specific, you know, uh, what did I choose here? You know, 10 a.m., you know, then yes, I would say, if we want to start that and, and things that. But in general, we want, um, like, let's say if we're, we're wanting to do something in general, like post a video, do a writing, reach out to someone, whatever it is, you know, um i don't in that case usually look at that much you know the send at the houses you know because the, the things change so quickly i need to yeah. post this now you know it's really hard to get those moments uh specific but if it's like a marriage a relationship in the beginning you know launching the business then then i, I would uh you know look at the houses the house house rulers even you know the ascendant ruler the whatever we're choosing for that house ruler and and aspects but in general uh, how i do it is is literally look at uh, moon then uh dignities of planets and then aspects of 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 yes. If there's if there are mostly good aspects, let's let's put right. it right. I, I particularly like you choose like Libra, um, Venus and Libra to be angular conjunct the ascendant for your electional, mm -hmm. because it's almost like a focus, deep or profound way of connecting can come through because Venus's um, next aspect will be trining the North Node. And then right after that is trining Saturn. So it gives me like that fortifying strengthening of relationships. Actually, I find that this chart is really good. Like if you if you want to go for couples therapy. <laughs> probably. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> probably pretty good, you know, yeah. because it is. The I'm Venus so is pretty, it is, it, Venus is doing pretty well here. Yeah. You know, yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, I, I quite like the Libra rising and also like creative uh, creative project commitments maybe that's good for that as well with the with the moon if we're going into specific in in such detail i would say even uh, you know doing some sort of private online consultations if you're doing more intuitive work for mm -hmm. example because the moon is in the third house it's very right. good in the third right. and also if you want if you if you're performing something a little bit when in, in within groups because sun is strong in, in the 11th house and venus is in the first house very strong mm -hmm. so like when whenever venus in the first first house ruler of the first in the first you know there, there's a sensation or feeling that you know the, um, the charisma is more there for yeah. for the person doing it and and it, you kind of attract more good things to yourself you know venus pleasures and attention you know you 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 are um, able to present yourself in a more pleasant pleasant way let's put mm. it that way. and because if i were to go via your liberal rising there is a day chart and so like jupiter in the fifth house is really good for something like you reckon this is good for like potentially looking for a serious date. <laughs> so, yeah. I, like, I like the way your mind works because Saturn. Yeah. 
Saturday is here, yeah, because it can't be, you know, super spontaneous. Both are retrograde, so maybe someone that's asked you out for a date before then, you're like, okay, like, finally, we'll just go out for a date on today, right? Yeah, you can go back. <laughs> you can go back. <laughs> but just be aware of that um, Mercury, Mars, you know, conjunction there. Right. Probably going to Maybe be... black tie party, since you say, like, you know, fifth, like that Saturn represents black, so black tie party, which is fifth house Saturn, <laughs> right? <laughs> Like a very formal, like a very formal group event, you know. Yeah, where there's uh, a lot Aquarius. of people, like, and it's also to network and all that. So I think that's great for that. So just let me uh, uh, share my screen over here. The first date I want to look at is on the 21st. And uh, I've, I've basically derived this date um, through what I call the Venus star technique because there's an there's a activation via transit Venus into the five active um, um, transit Venus star points at the moment that we are living in. And I just toggle back and forth to see what, what kind of um, planets on the, uh, on the ascendant or on the MC will be suitable. And that's how I actually like came up with like um, um, this one and two other dates. And the first I one is, I just want to kind of ask you, this is a very specific momentary uh, date. I'm, I'm, yeah, so you just go to the 21st of August and you just smack the sun or the ascendant. And there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of the planets will fall into place. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but this one, I find that, you know, like when we talk about electional, right, people usually want to start things. <laughs> but then this one, in particular, when the sun is like rising in the chart, and then if you just observe the rest of the uh, the planets, uh, particularly we've got a, a moon and Saturn conjunction <laughs> in Aquarius, mm -hmm. and uh, Jupiter is also in the same sign in Aquarius in in, in the uh, whole sign seven house, for example. In this case, um. Mer Mercury is okay in its own sign. Um, Already separating as well. Separating, but both Mars and Mercury, which can represent like a, uh, like a passionate contact, is trining Uranus. <laughs> yes, <yeah. laughs> so that's why I mentioned earlier that not all charts are for beginning something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some charts are actually better for ending something. <laughs> And we have the moon actually approaching to a full moon. Not quite there yet, but it's like this kind of, um, when I see the moon and the sun forming this going to be full moon energy, it's like a gibbous lunar phase. It's mm -hmm. got that Virgo kind of feel as well. Um, it's actually good for fine tuning something or refining something or revising something. That's the energy I got. Um, I was actually thinking that maybe um, because the if you go by whole sign house system we have quite a good second house because Mars actually rules the fourth house over here mm -hmm. and second and fourth is like some, some kind of family lineage healing may take place mm. as well and the 12th house which is kind of uh it's also part of the uh water houses the ruler is conjunct saturn over here so it can it can really be some kind of lineage healing or purging some kind of past karmic linkage out of the way and confronting that and get it out of the way as well that's the kind of energy i got so the things I wrote down here are like family lineage uh, healing and also karmic clearing, something regarding that. And um, mm. the ninth house ruler, whole sign, which is Mars over here, we've got Chiron, which is the one of the asteroid of astrologers. <laughs> and the ruler, which is Mars, is one, two, three, four, five, six houses away in like uh, in Virgo. So I actually wrote down here that it's also a very good um, day 
that you may want to consider having an astrological consultation as well. If you have some issues that you want to um, uh, uh, sort out, maybe you want to book a relationship kind of reading. That's why the seven house is packed in Aquarius. <laughs> I just wanted to say because it's interesting yeah. because the, the Venus is very good in the third, you know, in right. Libra, and it's yeah. it's uh, trining that seventh house stellium. So I think it's like good for you know consultations in yeah. gen general, like uh, getting good advice, like uh, synastry uh, readings or yeah. um, Venus style. And you're in you're. Your <laughs> is in the tenth as well, so maybe you're you're right on the money with that. That's yeah, right. and uh, but having said that, right, when I see Moon, Saturn, Jupiter in a seventh Hosang house, and uh, mm. Jupiter is opposing the Sun, what this tells me is that there can be some. If you want to engage an astrologer for a relationship reading, etc., all that, some kind of emotionally Moon sobering. Saturn, information is going to come out, but it will help you to dissolve any kind of, it's objective and it will help you to kind of confront any self-delusional tendencies. <laughs> very well said, I would say. Very grounding advice. Very like grounding, very yes. <laughs> yeah, and because Venus in the third house in Libra really is like, you're just serving and you're being like you just look at both sides, Libra, of it and just say like you mean it. And uh, it really helps the client, which is seven house, um, to, um, um, or maybe you're an astrologer and you've got a stack of uh, relationship readings. Maybe this is the day that you want to like just plow through those <laughs> as well. Um, artistic project launch. That's the other thing I... Uh, in terms of marketing, because Venus is in the third house in its own sign, oh, yeah. oh. and it's ruling like Uranus and uh, the tenth house cusp, whole sign house. Oh, yes. So it can it can help in terms of like getting publicity for that. Um, yeah, and Sun Sun is in the first as well, so yeah, that's a good way to put it in the public. And um, Venus in the third house as well. If you want to like launch an online shop. It, it may be good for that as well because uh, Venus in the third house, it can really help with uh, initial sales launch. And Sun is Sun is in the first whole sign house and you can really bring the, the, um, the heart and soul of your whatever you want to sell to the forefront. And sometimes you can even sell for more value than it should. <laughs> yeah. And make it pretty. Make it pretty with Venus in the third if you're doing anything oh, yeah. online. Make it, yeah, so make very it pretty. Good. Yeah, very good for like marketing and promotion, which is very much yeah. like that, that, that Leo house and that Libra house kind of, you know, um, and uh, kind of feeling. Um, because moon is also what we eat. <laughs> and it's conjunct Saturn in Aquarius. So the, the key phrase of like, um, diet and exercise routine really came up for me. If you want to uh, find a day to kind of like restructure and reorganize and just have a totally brand new revamping, a new diet plan of yours, maybe you want to cut out some things and introduce something else into your diet. Good for that as well. In this case, Saturn even rules the sixth as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, mm -hmm. because we're talking about a gibbous moon, right, the face right before uh, a full moon. And so it's like that, there's that Virgo energy again, trying to like refine something, trying to like edit something, trying to review something. So maybe that will actually help as well. 